That's one of the shortest gospel readings of the entire three-year cycle of readings. Um, the first two verses we heard five weeks ago. Jesus came into Galilee proclaiming the gospel. What was the gospel? God's not far away. His kingdom is right here. So change your life. Believe in the good news. Some of the words of the gospel we heard on Ash Wednesday. Um, again, repent. Change your life. Believe in the good news. And in the gospel, we hear words that affect the season that we're in. The Spirit drove Jesus out into the desert, and he remained in the desert for 40 days, tempted by Satan. How long do we have now in this season of Lent? If you're working it out in your head, it's 40, because Sundays don't count. So Mark is always the briefest of the Gospels. Um, you know, oftentimes all three tell the story, and Mark's often the shortest. Um, and, and this is a great example of that, because all that Mark says is that the Spirit drove Jesus out into the desert, and he remained in the desert for 40 days, tempted by Satan. Well, Mark and Luke both tell us the substance of those temptations. Mark, Matthew, and Luke both say, Satan tempted Jesus. If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. They also witness the devil took Jesus to the top of the temple and said, if you are the Son of God, throw yourself down and the angels will catch you. Jesus had just immediately before this in the scriptures, it might have been the same day, Jesus was baptized by John. It's the beginning of his public ministry. And Jesus, John said, hey, look, no, I don't baptize you. And, and no, Jesus said, no. No, this is for you to do. Jesus always gives us the example, what he wants us to do. And the Father had said from the, from the heavens, you are my beloved son. Listen to him. The Father had, no, Jesus knew this. It was part of his embedded and, um, and, and you know, um, prayed into reality. But the Father announced it to those there and to the whole world, to all of Israel. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. And what did the devil do right after that? He tested that. If you are the son of God, get some bread. You're hungry. If you are the son of God, throw yourself down. And let everybody see, prove that God will do what he says he will do. How did Satan most strategically tempt Jesus? He attacked his identity. I think one of the main ways that the devil wreaks such great havoc today is like with Jesus, he attacks our identity. If we've been baptized, if we've repented of our sins, if we've if we've accepted Jesus, you know, yielded our life, if we're filled with the Holy Spirit, we're different. We're not who we sometimes think we are. We're not who sometimes other people say we are. It's not who the world continually tells us what we are. We are who God says we are. And, and the devil knows that if he can talk us out of that, if he can talk us out of the privileged place that we have, that we're a son or a daughter, that we're filled with the Holy Spirit, that he'll answer our prayers, that he'll give us power, if he can talk us out of that, he's got us. 
It was is where he started with Jesus. And I think it's it goes on. I, I've had this. I, I I think it's a prophetic feeling over the last couple of years that identity is one of the things that God wants to most reinforce in every one of us. Know who you are. I've got a handout. We'll go over the handout at the end, but I think it's one of the best handouts I've ever had. There's about 15 or 20 scripture passages on the back about what the Bible says, what God says your identity is. This is who you are. You're who God says you are. The devil's going to try and talk you out of it. Because then you will be opposing him. Because the kingdom of God came to tear down his kingdom. And he doesn't want you or anybody else involved in that. And these 40 days are just meant to be a special time. 40 days is a code word in the scriptures. How long was Noah in the ark? How long was Moses up on Mount Sinai receiving the Ten Commandments? Take a wild guess. How long was Elijah fleeing from the prophets of Baal to Sinai where he encountered God in silence? 40 days through the desert. How long was Jonah in the belly of the whale? No, how long did Jonah preach to the Ninevites? It's a code word. A special time where God prepares us for something important. Jesus, it's not accidental that he went into the desert for 40 days. The, this time that we, this period we have of Lent, it's, it's not an accident. It's, it's intentional. It's a pattern. It's something God has ordained. So like 40 days, man, how do you feel about that? I, 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 think, I think, I, I've said over the years, I think, People have, you know, pretty much one of three responses, things in between. First, response is, oh, good, this is my favorite time of the year. I'm getting there, but I'm not sure I'm actually there. It seems like a long time sometimes. But no, I, I've had it three times since Monday. I, I, I love this. It's my favorite time of the year. Okay, there's another one that says, you know, oh, man, kind of fills me with dread, makes me feel guilty. It's just another thing that I'm not going to do very well. Because that's been the past. I, the last one I, I, I think is the worst. It says, oh, I don't make a big deal out of it. I pretty much ignore it. It's not that much different than any other time. I've made it so far without it causing a fuss. Please don't do that one. Um... It's resisting, it's resisting grace. It's saying no to God. We lose when we say that. Regardless of where you are, excited, guilty, indifferent, this is a special season. Give God permission to work in you. Sometimes I think we say, you know, well, if God wants to do something, it's okay with me. That's not good enough. Seek him out. Give him permission. Say, Lord, I want what you want from me. I want to make it a special time. Show me how I can do that and give me the power to do it. God's got something for us. He wants to... He's building here an alternative culture, a different way of life to the one that we see all around us. The world is toxic and getting worse. God has something different. He wants us to be a part of it. And that means we, we, we need to know, like, get in shape. 
That's what Lent's for. For her to call the yearly, renew, the, the yearly retreat of the Christian people. I actually think it's more than that. It's a special time where God has special things in mind for each of you, an opportunity of grace. So again, if you've been baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit, committed your life to Christ, picking up the cross, denying yourself and following him, then, then very special things have happened. You're a son or a daughter of God. You're living in his grace. You have a new identity, an identity that this world thinks makes you just an alien. Some ancient artifact. No. So the devil lies. He tempts us. God didn't really say that. We don't really believe that anymore. He, he's trying to keep something good from you. That's why he doesn't want you to do this stuff. It's fun. Or nothing bad's going to happen if you do that. Look around you. Those are actually the three temptations God used on Adam and Eve in the desert. God didn't say that. <clears throat> Nothing bad will happen. He's trying to keep something good from you. Lies. Tragic, destructive lies. The Bible says the devil accuses us night and day before the throne of God. The devil, the Bible says Jesus is a murderer from the beginning and has no truth in him. It says the devil only comes to steal and kill and destroy. Part of being equipped to be mature in Christ is to learn to resist the devil, like Jesus did. And that's what this time is for. A time of preparation, a time to get stronger. So I've got some screens. Um, we're going to go over them. I've actually got a handout. I think it's probably the land, biggest handout I've ever given. And it's, it amplifies these things. It goes over the temptations of Christ and how we can apply them. And on the back, I like this because um, it, it, it's got all these passages about what the Bible says, what God says you are. Again, we need to hear it over and over again. We need to memorize these things because this is truth. Now do sometimes you think you are a loser, something, no, nothing special to God. Or who others think you are, what the world says you are, you're, you're this. Please take one. We, we made a lot of copies. Um, it's worth it. I think it helps us focus and prepare for Lent and get out of it what God wants us to do. And be smarter. Be learned. God doesn't want us to feel guilty. He wants us to be smarter. Okay. So the three temptations of the devil... Um, Jesus was fasting. It's 40 days. He was hungry. So the devil said, hey, there's a stone. Make it bread. Who wouldn't be hungry? It's a natural, it's not a bad thing. It's a natural human thing. The devil used natural human things to talk us out of what God wants and to misuse them. Sex is one. It's meant, it's meant to be something absolutely beautiful. The foundation of, 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 of a love that is not possible apart from Christ. Um, and that's almost getting lost in the world. So God uses our appetites and says, okay, go ahead and do it. It's not bad. Everybody's doing it. Nothing bad will happen. We need to resist that. Okay. Um, you know, God... I don't see you. Where are you? I don't feel you around. I don't see you doing anything. I'm sitting here with all these problems. Do something right now. Show yourself to me. I... 
in some ways asking for more of God is good, but, it, but insisting on it and proving it is not. I mean, if you don't change some of this stuff, what reason do I have to believe in you? Well, that for one. Um, took him up to the top of the temple, said, jump off, and the angels will catch you. Make God prove it. Show me. Last temptation. Again, these are all the kingdoms of the world, the devil said. I will give them to you. You don't have to go to that cross stuff. Jesus knew what he came to do. He came to be a sacrifice for sin. He knew he was going to sweat blood. He knew this was going to be a great test. And the devil said, no, you, you don't have to do that. There's an easier way. All you have to do is this. Deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow me. There is no other way. These are just some of them, but they're the ones that Jesus had, which I think shows us things about the devil's strategy. Okay. Um, I, I spent so much time talking about this. We, we hear an awful lot of confessions here. It's a very beautiful thing. <laughs> it's amazing to me. This is just, yesterday was just the beginning of Lent. Even the week before, I heard confessions for, over, for just about three and a half hours, and Father Clifford heard them for two and a half hours himself. I mean, that's a lot. And, I, and so, so we say these things over and over again. Temptation is not sin. I, I, people feel guilty. So, Father, I've just had some, I mean, God, I've had some thoughts about my sister. I've had some thoughts about people at work. You know, I've had some thoughts about God himself. Um, I just feel so bad. Well, did you hit your sister? Did you do anything you shouldn't have done? No, no, no but geez, it, I feel slimed. Temptation's not sin. Okay, sometimes I think well, we're really tempted. Maybe it's our weakness. We have this thought, I got to do that. But you know you're not supposed to. You don't want to. So you, so you say no and say, God help me. And then the devil comes and makes you feel guilty for the temptation you resisted that he gave you. What kind of person are you thinking thoughts like that? It was a temptation. You know what we call people who aren't tempted anymore? Dead. A lot of people say saints. It's the wrong thing. I think saints are more aware of temptation because they're spiritually alive and they're trained to recognize it and resist it. The people who don't know temptation is people who are kind of dead. But it, it, spiritually dead. But, but it's, a, it's, it, it's a reality of this life and it's a reality that God uses to change us. Sometimes we feel condemned for the sins we commit or even the temptations that we gave us. God never condemns. God never condemns although we feel it all the time. The Father did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save it. That's what God thinks about our sins. Now the devil, he's a liar. All he wants to steal and kill and destroy. But that's not God. He doesn't condemn. If you feel it, it's not God. God wants to save you. We expand on all of these in the handout. Temptation has a purpose. God allows it. Not to give us more than we can take, but to strengthen us. Lastly, these are some of the questions that are on the handout, but they speak to the readings. Um, what lie has the devil 
had that's been most seductive for you? The one that kind of gets you. You haven't been very good at resisting it. It's a lie. Identify it. Speak the truth to it. That's what Jesus did. The devil was lying, and Jesus spoke the truth. And there's a lot of truth here. What does God want to do with you in Lent? Ask him. Sometimes we think, you know, what should I be doing? I mean, God can speak to us. He'll inspire us. He's got something specially in mind. (laughs) He doesn't do bad stuff. He's got good stuff. But ask him. Say, Lord, I'm asking you. I'm giving you permission. I want you to do in me what you have in mind for this season. It's important. It's very holy and blessed. And we can do it together.